What's up guys? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado, and today I wanted to go over um, some different traits of mycelium and what to look for when you're breeding your mycelium. So first thing is that I wanted to know every single species of mushroom has its own type of mycelium. So I have printed out this chart here, which is a prompt, uh, pretty common chart describing the different types of mycelium. So you can see it breaks it down into form, um, the elevation of the mycelium and the margin, which is the area of the edge of the growth. So um, usually saprobes are, you know, filamentous in nature, pretty flat or raised um, somewhere in this range and pretty uniform. But I can go through a few plates that I have and kind of point out what I'm seeing as I, um, I'm choosing what plates are ready and what plates aren't. So this is a king oyster. Um, you can see it's got some really nice healthy growth. So one indication of healthy mycelium is that it's gonna be very white and vibrant. Um, but if you look closer, you can see right on the edge here, there's gonna be some filamentous growth and it will start off as a cottony colony. Usually that's just kind of stress from the transfer. Um, it's pretty normal in oyster mushrooms. So I can move on to a lion's mane mycelium and you can see the big difference here. It's a lot more granular and very thin and wispy. So it's going to be filamentous and round and you know, pretty flat, relatively flat. Um, so that's a healthy lion's mane and now we've got a beach mushroom here. So look at how raised this mycelium is. So beach mushrooms are really um, raised and you can see that on this plate here nice white and healthy and as I'm going through my petri dishes I'm paying attention to the perimeter of the mycelium making sure that there's no contaminants showing um, so this right here is a cordyceps so you can see how dense and I would call that cottony it's got a really cottony growth um, a nice even edge pretty flat or slightly raised form um, but that is really you know what you're looking for ideal for cordyceps and as it's exposed to light cordyceps will start to turn orange so that's a feature for cordyceps mycelium all right so next we've got some piapini um, you can see how beautiful nice and round and one of the things that I do to double check that there's no contaminants as well um, is that I'm making sure that the bottom of the plate is nice and clean. Sometimes if there's yeast or bacteria that's hiding in there, you'll see small round blotches or blobs. Um, so this one looks very clean. It's a pretty standard piapini. It's very dense, um, cottony, just like the beach mushroom, but a little bit more flat. So now we've got a chanterelle, and you can see how this one has a little bit more irregular form. So it's not gonna be a perfect circle every time. It has different filaments, different sizes, and it's slightly cottony on the edge. So I'm really excited. I got some chanterelle mycelium. I'm gonna be doing some experiments in the fall with this. Hopefully I can figure out how to fruit that. So next is with King Strafaria. So a different um, characteristic that I try to select for is the speed of growth. So King Strafaria is usually pretty slow on MEA, but you can see it's nice and dense and white and healthy. So um, this one was inoculated at 724. So this is a couple weeks of growth and you can see it's pretty slow compared to, you know, this uh, chanterelle that's already taken over the plate and this was inoculated five days after this one. So, you know, it's another characteristic to, 
to select for, like this brown oyster, which is 729, so same day, but you can see how fast this growth is. So oyster mushrooms are notoriously fast. Um, I just wanted to kind of point out this right here. Oh, actually that's just a, a little bit of auger that never filled the plate. And you can see the mycelium is just growing right over that. That's how rigorous the oysters are. So I've got a couple plates here that look to be contaminated. So this is a chanterelle transfer. And you can see that blotch right here. So I'm not gonna use that one. Um, it's definitely a dead giveaway that there's some yeast in there, possibly some bacteria like right, right there where it's got that really heavy, dark mycelium. And you can see compared to a clean plate, it's nice and uniform. And then you can see some contamination there. So that's a key sign that um, there was something wrong with the transfer, maybe some yeast from my skin got onto the plate. And then I've got this uh, other oyster mushroom that it has some kind of orange growth on there. So that's another indication of possible contamination. So I'm just gonna go ahead and discard that as well. All right guys, so I hope that clears up any questions on different types of mycelium that we're trying to select for when we're breeding. Ultimately, it's gonna come down to the fruiting and you know the yields, but I like to just select for really healthy mycelium before going through all that process. Kind of saves the headache in the long term. And you know, another characteristic of mycelium is how long it's gonna last over time. And the only way to know is just to keep on growing it out. So. Um, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to our channel if you're looking for more mycology videos like this. Um, check out our Etsy if you're looking to purchase um, fresh living mycelium cultures. We, we're going to be putting up a bunch of plates this week, so um, stay tuned on that. And until next time, guys, much love. <laughs>